Hello, I'm uh, Paul Beckwith. Um, so I've been doing a series of videos which is a mishmash of some of the most significant effects that are occurring with abrupt climate change. And I was going to end off with the last video, but there's some things that I still have to cover. So I'm hoping that this, I, I think that this will be the last video of my series. I think you'll like what, uh, what I have to show here. So this is an animated diagram of the Earth's carbon cycle and how it's changed over time. So carbon in various forms, including CO2 and organic materials, right? Carbon is the base bone of, of uh, organic materials, which make up life, plants and animals, is continually being exchanged between the atmosphere, the oceans and the biosphere. However, human activities have perturbed the carbon cycle. So let's have a look at this. Um, look at this guy here. Let's stop it and let's go back to the beginning. Okay, so what we have here, this is the Earth's carbon cycle. Um, each dot is one gigaton of carbon, which is 10 to the 12th kilograms of car carbon, which is a pedogram, because this is a thousand grams, so it's 10 to the 15th grams of carbon or a pedogram of carbon. Okay, so these are the different stocks of where it is and the, the the lines are the flows the red lines are the flows okay so we have the atmosphere okay this is pre-industrial it was about 277 parts per million which is 589 gigatons of carbon in the atmosphere in the ocean life and dissolved organics in the ocean 700 gigatons of carbon in the near surface of the ocean, right, CO2 has a high solubility in the ocean. There's 900 gigatons of carbon. In the intermediate and deep ocean, a huge reservoir, 3, 37,100 gigatons of carbon. So if you add all these together for the ocean, it's a very, very high number, 38,700 gigatons, a huge reservoir of carbon. Now, in the biosphere, living and dead, there's 2,500 gigatons. By photosynthesis, every year, um, 108.9 comes out of the atmosphere and is absorbed by, by the plant material. Now, respiration and fire returns most of that to the atmosphere, 108.3. There's only 0.6 is the difference, and that ends up in runoff going into the oceans. Volcanism is a very small amount, 0 0.1 gigatons of carbon on average per year. Weathering takes out 0 0.1 gigatons of carbon and sediments that go descend to the seafloor and build up on the ocean floor are 0.2 gigatons of carbon. The rock in the Earth's crust contains the vast majority of carbon, 75 million gigatons of carbon. Okay, so this is pre-industrial. Now this is going to cycle through from pre-industrial years to present day and you can see how these numbers change, how the carbon cycle is changing. So let's have a look. Okay, so this is pre-industrial and these are the flows. Okay, now we have 1850. Okay, now so the year is changing and, and what you can see is how the flows are changing. This is the fossil fuel deposits. Okay, so we're burning fossil fuels. So we're, that combustion, that CO2 is putting carbon up into the atmosphere. The atmospheric numbers are here, so we're slowly rising in parts per million. And uh, you can see how the different flows are, are changing but you have to, there's a lot going on here. Um, so we're using more and more of the fossil fuel deposits and we're putting more and more CO2 up into the atmosphere. Okay, there is more and more human and land use changes occurring. Okay, um, these, are, these are steady numbers here. Okay, so there's some going into the sediments, there's some uh, these processes are all occurring. We're up to 1974. Okay, so we're burning more and more fossil fuels and the levels in the atmosphere are rising more and more. 
Um, and so these are the, this is the sinks into the ocean here and so on. Okay, um, so what you can see is, um, you can see, and see these, uh, the red dots here? Okay, here's 2017. So we've burned lots of fossil fuels. We've dug up the fossil fuels. We've taken the carbon out of the ground. We put lots of it up into the atmosphere. Um, so you can see these red dots, they stay red to show you where that carbon is going. So a lot of the carbon from fossil fuel deposits, it's going up into the atmosphere, all those extra red dots. So now, you know, in 2017, we were at 406 parts per million, which was 130 rise um, from the pre-industrial, or in gigatons of carbon, a rise of 260, 276 gigatons of carbon in the atmosphere, which is a lot of the 424 used, you know, more than half of it. And we've got um, more, it's also spread into the ocean life and dissolved organics. It's spread into the dissolved CO2 and it's filtering into the deep ocean. And it's also going into the biosphere. So, so that carbon that we're burning is going into all of these other reservoirs, including the atmosphere, the component that's going into the atmosphere, of course, is what we talk about. We've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere. We've changed the chemistry of the oceans. The oceans become more acidic. The atmosphere, higher concentrations in the atmosphere are um, powerful greenhouse gases, so they're trapping more and more heat, which is raising the temperature of the Earth significantly. We've also degraded the biosphere in the oceans, for example, and also on the land, and those are big sinks of carbon. We're getting more and now because we're in a hotter world, um, we are getting um, more plant growth. Um, so photosynthesis has increased uh, relative to pre-industrial. Um, we're getting more, there's more humans, there's more respiration, and there's also more fires, and that's putting more carbon up into the atmosphere from the biosphere. Um, there is more CO2 because there's higher levels in the atmosphere and there's a dynamic balance with the ocean. There is more CO2 going in, being dissolved into the ocean water, making the ocean acidic at the surface. Um, the ocean is releasing more but not as much as what is going in from the solubility of the water. Um, there's, uh, you know, the ocean life and dissolved organics has actually decreased because we've had a huge loss of the large uh, marine creatures and the food chain, the, the whole, the number of fish in the ocean is significantly declining. So these numbers are dropping. There is more CO2 going into the uh, intermediate and deep ocean from these various processes. So that you what so this is a fascinating way of displaying it, and it's well worth your time in looking at this. Um, you know, playing this a bunch of times and learning. Every time you watch it, you can learn a different thing because you're not able to look at everything as an overall picture initially. You need to look at you know look at one specific look at focus on one specific pathway and play the movie then play it again and look at another pathway and then another one. And then after you do this a bunch of times, you've learned an awful lot about Earth's carbon cycle, about the rise of CO2 in the atmosphere, about the dynamic balance with the ocean, and about how the biosphere is being affected. And of course, the you know, ocean acidification is a huge problem. Biodiversity is a huge problem. And the uh, CO2 in the atmosphere is a huge problem trapping the heat. So, so this, um, this is a brilliant, uh, you know, a brilliant display of the carbon cycle and how it is changing over time. Um, I'll show a few more things. Um, the, we have a massive uh, pyrocumulus uh, fire situation going on in uh, Alberta. I think it's just west of Calgary, over 5,000 people have evacuated out of their homes. Um, the fire is putting up, uh, this is monitoring smoke aerosols. Okay, so this is a Copernicus um, European satellite, the Atmospheric Monitoring Service forecast. So it's high levels of CO2 are going up into the 
air, high levels of aerosol, smoke aerosols are going up. And because of the circulation patterns, they're finding, a lot of them are finding their way up into the Arctic where they'll deposit on sea ice, they'll make it darker and they'll increase the melting rate of sea ice. Um, so, you know, it's very important. For, it, it shows you the connections. This is another uh, European Copernicus um, uh, satellite data showing the aerosol optical depth forecasted. So you can do short-term forecasts. This is from the 23rd of May, running out about a week, and you can see the dust kicking up from the uh, deserts in Africa and then wafting over various parts of Europe. Okay, so the, um, so the, um, and, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's fascinating what we can see and what we can measure. Um, I've decided today that I'm taking control. There you go. Got to have a bit of humor in this, uh, you know, <laughs> this video series. You know, um, this is temperature, sea surface temperatures off Alaska. Incredibly warm in the Arctic and incredibly warm temperature anomalies in the Arctic um, off Alaska going into the Arctic Ocean. This is some data from Jason Box showing the albedo of Greenland and the, so that's the reflectivity of the ice sheet of Greenland. Um, it, there was a heat wave in late April that produced darker ice, so lowered the albedo, but in May um, there's some recovery, so the blue areas are increasing albedo and the, the, the reds are decreasing albedo, okay, over Greenland. Um, this is uh, just another indication of how messed up the temperature is with latitude. As the jet streams slow down and become wavier, uh, you can get uh, troughs going very, very deep south where it's much colder than normal. This is a trough that is persisting here, Friday, May 24th. And parts of the Arctic are, are above zero. Those are the green areas above zero. And so it's colder in the southwest United States down here than it is at the North Pole. Um, jet stream waviness. Look at the troughs here and the brokenness and the anomalies. Um, this is uh, another depiction from January through December of the CO2 level, the weekly CO2 level at Mauna Loa, which is the station that has been measuring CO2s uh, since the late 50s, I believe. And you can see um, the, uh, the annual maximum is typically reached in May. Okay, so this maximum here is typically reached in May. And this is showing, um, you can't see the year here, I got to expand it. Okay, there's the year over here. So we'll just keep going here. Let's uh, start again. Okay, so 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, we hit 400. And then we hit about 500 here, jumped up. Okay, and in 2018, we're over, here we go. 20, 28th of April to the 4th of May, we hit, we're just under, we're about close to 415, and we've gone over 415. You know, individual days, there's fluctuation, but this is the, the weekly averages, so there's no, there's no end in sight. So as long as these numbers continue to rise, um, any action that we take on climate change has, has been ineffective. Sea level is rising. Um, this is the latest global mean sea level rise, the latest satellite altimetry, altimetry data that's been processed through mid-March 2019. 3.36 millimeters per year rise. Let's see the, uh, the, the curve here. You know, that's a linear fit from 93 on. You can do, uh, you know, we're, we're tracking that pretty closely here up to about 2011. Big dip here because there was huge rainfall over land took a while for that water to run back into the oceans, which it did here. So there is some perturbations and fluctuations in, in sea level rise. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I could go on forever here, but um, I'm gonna, gonna stop. Um, you know, here we are, you know, in May. Thanks.